Welcome to today's lesson. In the last lesson, we learned about the nature of enzymes. Students, today we will learn how do we name and classify enzymes. That is the classification and the nomenclature of enzymes. So, after this lesson, you will be able to name the different enzymes based on the type of reaction they catalyze. Are you ready? Let's start. How do you name and classify enzymes? For example, different enzymes are named in different ways. Most commonly, enzymes are named by adding A's to part of the name of the substrate meaning that some enzymes commonly named by adding A's to the substrate they catalyze. For example, polymerase. This enzyme aids in the polymerization, meaning that the joining similar unit together. Lipase. This is the enzyme which hydrolyze lipid into glycerol and fatty acid. The hydrolyzing enzyme of lipid is known as lipase. Lipid is a substrate, therefore A is added to the name of the substrate, therefore we call it lipase. Sucrase. This enzyme, sucrase, since it hydrolyzing sucrose, that is a substrate, we call it sucrase. And sometimes the enzymes are named on the basis of the reaction they catalyze. For example, polymerase. Just this is based on the reaction they catalyze. The previous one is based on the substrate they are catalyzing. We call lipase for that enzyme which is catalyzing or hydrolyzing lipid. Sucrase for those enzymes that catalyzes the sucrose. In this case, or in the second case, enzymes are named on the basis of the reaction they catalyze. For example, polymerase. This is aiding the polymerization reaction, joining similar units together. Many monomers joined together by enzyme polymerase to make a polymer. The second one is said to be dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase, dehydrogenase means the removal of hydrogen atom or ion, okay? Some enzymes, again, have been named based on the source from which they were first identified, okay? Source of identification. For example, papain, which is extracted from papaya. Others, are named according to where they act. According to where they act. For example, intestinal protease acts on protein in the intestine. There are also enzyme 
salivary amylase. Since it is acting inside the mouth, it's said to be salivary amylase. The name of some enzymes end in in, indicating that they are basically proteins. Okay? Some enzymes, the name of some enzymes end with in in, indicating that they are basically proteins. For example, pepsin, trypsin, and etc. These enzymes, pepsin and trypsin, are basically proteins. Their name, or the last two letters, in, pepsin, trypsin, in, these two indicates they are originally proteins. These enzymes usually have alternative names that tell you rather more about them. Some enzymes have also an alternative name that can able to express the enzyme. For example, the alternative name for pepsin is said to be gastric protease. This tells you that it acts on protein and it does so in the stomach. That's why it is called gastric protease. Enzyme classification and the systematic nomenclature of enzymes. Now let's look the classification and the nomenclature of enzymes. Enzymes are classified into six functional classes. The EC number classification by the International Union of Biochemists, IUB, on the basis of the type of reaction that they catalyze, enzymes are classified into six functional classes. The EC1 is known as oxido reductase. The second class is known as transferase. The third class is known as EC hydrolase. The third class is said to be lyase. The fourth class is known as isomerase. And finally, the sixth class is said to be ligase. Therefore, according to the International Union of Biochemists nomenclature and classification system, enzymes are classified into six functional classes. Oxidoreductase, transferase, hydrolase, lyase, isomerase, and ligase. The principle of international classification. What is the principle behind this classification system? Each enzyme has a classification number. Okay? Each enzyme has a classification number consisting of four digits. For example, enzyme commission 2.7.1.1. Hexokinase. Have you seen? There are four digits in front of the name of the enzyme. Hexokinase, in front of it, we do have four digits. Therefore, the classification number consists of four digits and the name. Now, let's look the f what these four digit numbers each represent. Okay? The first number shows to which of the six main classes the enzyme belongs. Have you seen? The first number, that is two, it represents to which class this enzyme belongs, okay? The second figure, or the second digit, or number, indicates the subclass of that enzyme. And the third figure gives the sub-subclass. And the fourth figure 
is the serial number of the enzyme in this sub subclass that is known as specific name. Now let's look how this enzyme, which is EC271.1, is nomenclatured or named. EC, or the first two letters, EC, stands for enzyme commission. And two is class. What is the second class? It said to be transferase. We said that there are six main classes of enzymes. The first, second class is said to be transferase. What seven? This number, the second number, is the subclass, which is said to be transfer of phosphate. Transfer of phosphate. The third class number is the sub subclass, which is alcohol phosphate acceptor. Okay? Alcohol is phosphate acceptor. And uh, the last number is a specific name. The specific name. ATP D hexose 6 phosphotransferase, that is hexokinase. Therefore, each number represents a single name. The first name, the first number is the class, the second number is the subclass, the third number is the sub subclass, and the last number is said to be the specific name of that enzyme. Exokinase catalyzes the glucose uh, reaction. That means the glycolysis of uh, glucose and glucose is changed into glucose 6-phosphate. That is uh, uh, powered by ATP. Now let's look EC1, or the first enzyme commission 1, the first enzyme class, is said to be oxidoreductase. Oxidoreductase. We, do, we said that there are six main classes of enzymes. The first class is known as oxidoreductases. And the biochemical activity of this enzyme is it catalyzes the oxidation reduction reaction, okay? And it acts on many chemical groupings to add or remove hydrogen atom, to add or remove hydrogen atom, because this enzyme, oxidoreductase, just it is simple to understand from its name. This enzyme catalyzes the oxidation reduction reaction oxidation reduction reaction. Therefore, either it add or remove hydrogen atom. The typical example for this oxidoreductase is lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase, removal of hydrogen. Glucose oxidase, okay? Glucose oxidase, that is oxidation. Peroxida oxidase. Peroxidase, it facilitates the peroxides. Catalase, phenyl alanine hydroxylase. All these enzymes belong to the first class, oxidoreductase. Now let's look at the simple reaction that is catalyzed by such group of enzymes known as oxidoreductases. L-lactate and NAD, with the presence of lactate dehydrogenase, is converted into pyruvate. Converted into pyruvate. This is one of the reaction. What kind of reaction is this? Is it oxidation or reduction? Addition of hydrogen, okay, to NAD. That is the reaction. It catalyzes oxidation reduction reaction. Oxidase, peroxidase, D 
Dehydrogenase all belongs to the first group, oxidoreductase. The second group is said to be transferase. The biochemical activity for this typical enzyme group or the second group, transferases, is simply transfer a functional group. Example, methyl or phosphate between donor and acceptor molecules. They transfer the functional group from donor and acceptor molecule between. Kinase are specialized transferase that regulate metabolism of transferring phosphate from ATP to other molecules, okay, to other molecules. And the typical example, the typical example for the second class of enzyme are transaminase, phosphotransferases, that are also known as kinases, transmethylases, transpeptidases, and transcyclases. You can easily understand from the name. We said that transferase, they transfer the functional group. The functional group, for example, transmethylase, it transferred the methyl group, okay? It transfers the methyl group. Transpeptidase, it transfers a peptide group. That is the functional group, okay? Now, let's look the biochemical reaction. Typical example of the biochemical reaction for the second class of enzyme, transferase. The catalytic group transfer reaction. It catalyzes group transfer reaction. And you see, L anine with alpha glutarate, okay, alpha glutarate. The enzyme involved in this case is alanine transaminase. And the product is pyruvate and L glutamate. That is the transfer uh, reaction. The third group, the third group or the third class of enzyme or EC3 are known as hydrolases. Hydrolases contain many enzymes under this group, okay? Their biochemical activity, okay, in what kind of biochemical activity they involve is simply they catalyze the hydrolysis of various bonds. Add water across the bond. Hydrolysis, addition of water. And the typical example for this kind of enzyme is simply protein hydrolyzing enzymes. The protein hydrolyzing enzymes are known as peptidases. And the carbohydrates, amylase, maltase, lactase, all these are hydrolyzing carbohydrates. Lipid hydrolyzing enzyme is also known as lipase. D-aminases, phosphatases, all these enzymes hydrolyze the process of addition of water to the molecule. That is known as hydrolysis, the third group. Now let's look the simple example for this third class. Hydrolase catalyzes hydrolysis reaction where water is the acceptor of the transferred group. The transferred group is accepted by water. If you look the pyrophosphate with water, the enzyme involved is pyrophosphatase, therefore the phosphate is produced, the phosphate. The phosphate is the hydrogen acceptor or the water acceptor. The typical example are glycosidase, peptidases, okay? This is the third one. The fourth group, or EC4, is lyase. The biochemical activities that are involved is to cleave or break various bonds by means other than hydrolysis and oxidation. Other than hydrolysis and oxidation. And uh, add water 
ammonia or carbon dioxide across the double bond or remove this element to produce the double bond. Example is fumarase, carbonic and hydrase. The typical example for this is fructose 1,6 by bisphosphate by using aldolase is converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. That is what to call this is cleaving, meaning that the molecule is divided into two. Do you see the picture? If you look, fructose 1, 6 by phosphate is just divided at the middle into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. That is the reaction which is catalyzed by lyases. The fifth one is said to be isomerases. And this involves in a biochemical activity that catalyzes isomerization. Change within a single molecule. They carry out many kinds of isomerization. L to D isomerization, meaning that changing the molecule or moving the molecule on its own axis. Mutase reaction, shift of chemical group. The examples are isomerase and mutase. These are the two typical examples for the fifth class. Isomerase are a general class of enzyme which convert the molecule from one isomer to another. The general form of such reaction is as follows. Say, for example, A to B, B to A. That is what's called isomerization, just changing the rotation. That is the typical example for this reaction. Isomerase catalyzes isomerization reaction. L alanine, just involving alanine resumes and change it into D alanine. If you look closely, these two molecules, L alanine and D alanine, they are made from the same atoms. Okay? They are very similar. But the side in which H3 end is found in L alanine and D alanine is just changed. The position of the molecule or the amine group is changed. And this group facilitates intermolecular rearrangement. Intermolecular rearrangement in which bonds are broken and formed, or they can catalyze conformational change. The conformation is changed totally. The sixth one, or maybe the last class of enzyme is said to be EC6 ligase. And this enzyme catalyzes or join two molecules with covalent bond. The catalytic reaction in which two chemical groups are joined or ligated with the use of energy from ATP. ATP powers the reaction. Say, for example, the acetyl-CoA carboxylase, glutamine synthase. The typical biochemical activity represented in the example is L-glutamate, with ATP, presence of ATP and ammonia is converted into L-glutamine, okay? L-glutamine, and ADP and the phosphate is released. That is glutamine synthase. This is process is synthesis, ligase. That means ligation or joining two molecules, okay, or two substrates. And this requires a chemical energy, ATP. Remember, the last reaction requires expenditure of energy that is powered by ATP. Now, let us summarize the classification of enzyme. We said that the class in the first row, oxidoreductase, oxidation or reduction reaction, okay? The reaction catalyzes transfer hydrogen and oxygen atoms or electrons from one substrate to another. And the typical example is dehydrogenase oxidase. The second one is said to be transferase. This transfer a specific group, a phosphate or a methyl, from one substrate to another. Transaminase, kinase. Hydrolase, this hydrolysis substrate, esterases and digestive enzymes. Remember, all digestive enzymes are involved in hydrolysis reaction. Therefore, they are said to be hydrolysis. 
isomerase, this changes the molecular form of the substrate. Phosphophenoisomerase and fumarase, these are the typical examples. And the fifth one is lease, non-hydrolytic removal of group of or addition of group of to a substrate. That is dehydro decarboxylase and aldolase. And the last one is said to be ligase joining, lig synthesis, or maybe uh, also read as synthesis, and join of two molecules by the formation of new bonds, citric acid synthase. These are the end of the class. Thank you very much.